blessed us and kept us a whole week, dear God, and watch over us. Now, Father God, we just want to turn back a portion of what you have given to us, dear God, back to you that we may use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. We thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray.
not sure if everybody has heard yet, um, but uh, our sister Judy Clayton uh, passed away, uh, I believe, on Wednesday. So we're going to need to lift the, that Clayton family up. Also, uh, people that are sick and at home, our sister uh, Wanda Lewis, of course, and uh, brother Ronnie Wright. Uh, uh, Terry Brown and uh, Marty Thomas, and also um, Reverend uh, Wallace Smith as well. Um, is there any other people that come to mind? Front and uh, brother, yeah, our beloved brother. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh God, we thank you, God, for your promises. Yes, Lord, yes. Standing on the promises of Christ, my Savior. Thank you, Father. Father God, you are my armor, our armor, and you are our protector. Thank you. Yes. Lord God, we need not be afraid of the terror of the night. The calls that we get during the day, the calls that we get during the night, whatever those calls, whatever I have said in my soul, God, each one of us must say in our soul, it is with myself. Amen. Father, we pray, God, that we will continue not to be afraid, that we will walk, Lord, in the light. For God, for Father, you said that a thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand will even die around us, and it will not come nigh. So hand of protection, hand of comfort, hand of strength, hand of refuge. Come, Holy Spirit, come. For you, God, are the most high, and you, God, are our, our, our shepherd. Thank you, Lord, that no angel, that angels are protected. Yes. Father, we pray, God, for the grieving families. Yes. For those families, Lord, that are dealing with sudden death and with the loss of our loving sister. Yes. We pray, God, for Sister Carol and Alice and all the members of their family, Lord. Yes. This church family, for God, we are indeed Judy's family. Yes. We pray, God, for those who are sick at home. Oh, yes. We ask you, God, to continue to strengthen them. Yes, Lord. Yes. And God, bring comfort to them, sustain them. Yes. And, oh, Father, there are those who are still yet in hospital. Yes. We think of Sister Margie and Brother Terry Brown. Yes. We ask you, God, to continue to sustain them. Yes. Bring healing and yes. comfort and assurance to yes. them. Oh God, they need you and you are right there. They profess their love and their faith in you, God. Oh, isn't the name of Jesus something wonderful? Yes. Father, we pray, God, for those who have not yet accepted you as their Lord and Savior. And in our families and in the community and within those that we love so dearly, there are those yet who have not proclaimed that Jesus is the answer for the world today. That about him there's no other, that Jesus is the way. We pray, God, that we, as we as intercessors will continue to pray for them, yes. to guide them, to encourage them, yes. that if ever there was a time in their life that they need Jesus, it is today. Yes, Lord, yes. I need Jesus. And I thank you, God, that you are right here with us. Yes, Lord, yes. I ask you, God, right now to bring comfort to Sister Mary Desmond, <coughs> to yes. Sister Juanita, and so many others yes. that were so dear and so very close in the church family and in her Olivet home community <coughs> family. Father, we come because we realize that no other help do we really know. And we come, Lord Jesus, because you, Lord, bid us to come. Yes. You told us, Lord, that we can come boldly to yes. the throne of grace in grace. Yes. You show your love for us continually, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. So we bask this morning, Lord, in your light. Yes. In your love. Yes. We ask you, God, to continue with us. Thank you. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins. Forgive yes. us for our shortcomings. Yes. Knowing, Lord, that you know all about us, you know our hearts. Yes. Man looks on the outside, but, oh, Father, you know the heart of that person. Yes. So, God, we just come this morning giving it all to Jesus. Oh, yes. We surrender. Yes. Yes. All to Him. <coughs> It is in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus that we pray this morning. Yes. 
the matchless name of Jesus. There's no other name given to men whereby we might be saved but at the name of Jesus. Every knee and every shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. This is the God that we serve.
our own, the voices that we hear, that we, the thoughts that we think in our own head and mind are not the shepherd's voice. We can listen to the news, and Lord have mercy knows that we can become anxious and fearful because we consider our own situations and we know sometimes we are maybe only a paycheck or a situation away from disaster ourselves. Other voices can make us feel as if our lives aren't exciting enough. You know, you've seen the ads and the voices tell us your life is boring. You don't have this and you haven't traveled there. That you're not beautiful enough. You have to have glow on you. That you're not happy enough, that you're not good enough, that you haven't accomplished enough, and that maybe even for the young people, that you're missing out. You know, FOMO. But I don't have FOMO, I have JOMO. It's the, FOMO is the fear of missing out. I don't want to miss out on, I'm not worried about missing out on anything that the world has to offer. I only want to be connected to what the Lord has to offer. So my is, I have what I call Jomo, is I have the joy of missing out if it's going to distract me from the Lord's purposes. Still voices, other voices stir up, can stir up hatred. You know, we listen to the news and we think, oh, we get angry. And then sometimes it's bitterness and we're even discontent, forgetting how far the Lord has already brought us. And now while these voices draw our attention and distract us, the text today suggests that there may be even more that keeps us from hearing the one voice that we need to hear. Yeah. As if that weren't enough. The voice that offers direction, the one that offers love, the one that has assurance for us in the midst of whatever we're going through. He is the giver of life. God doesn't want us to be anxious and he doesn't want us to be fearful. He wants us to have good relationships with our family, with our brothers and sisters in Christ. He wants us to be disciplined. He wants us to be successful in our studies, successful in our endeavors. He wants us to be disciplined in our spending and disciplined in our giving. He wants us to be free of whatever, whatever is holding us back, whatever is holding us hostage, for the life that he has, the abundant life that he has prepared for us through Christ Jesus. So why do we not hear his voice? Could it be that we have the same problem that the Pharisees had who surrounded Jesus in the colonnade? The people Jesus was speaking to in today's text didn't want to be sheep. They didn't want to be sheep. Remember the text begins then, meaning that something was going on before, and that something is that Jesus was uh, amongst the people, he was in his, through his actions and his conversations, he let them know that he was the promised Messiah. And so the text says, then, this day, Jesus wasn't teaching and he wasn't healing and he was just walking about. And the religious leaders accosted him in the porch. He was in this part of the temple where he could get a little shelter. You know, and because uh, from the weather, they said it was winter, okay? And the people were gathered there in winter because it was a time of a celebration of the rededication of the festival, of the temple. The, the, the temple had been desecrated and they come back to celebrate that it was um, uh, refurbished, okay? <laughs> Just like we celebrated, we let us know we celebrate Christmas in winter. So at this particular time, the, the uh, John is telling us that it was in winter and Jesus was in the colonnade and he was in a place just trying to get a little shelter and just worship and you know because it's a rededication ceremony. It's still celebrated today and today we know it is Hanukkah. So Jesus is walking around in the temple area and the Jewish leaders around him and they say, listen Jesus, how long are you going to be walking around here and not telling us who you are? Well, Jesus had already told them who he was. Jesus said, he answers in this way because he knew it wasn't a legitimate question. Tell us who you are. So he said, I told you, and you didn't believe. The works I do in my Father's name, they testify of who I am. But you don't believe because you're not my sheep. Jesus said, I told you and I told you. Whose fault is it that you don't believe and that you don't respond? Sometimes we get a sign, we get a word. 
we get a message from the Lord, but we don't follow his direction and we end up in a situation and we wonder why. We don't want to follow his voice because it may conflict with our wants. It may conflict with our agenda, our thoughts, and our plans. The religious leaders had their own agenda, right? They were expecting, you know, a military king, a king who would rally the troops and overthrow the Roman oppressors once and for all. They were not expecting one healing people and blind people and talking about repentance, calling his followers to him and into a life-changing, intimate relationship with him. Jesus was calling them to action. Yes. And in, those, in the previous chapters in this book of John, Jesus then identified himself. They should have heard and understood when Jesus said that he was the bread of life. And he made the promise that to raise up all who the Father had given him on the last day. That's in John 6, 35 and 39. They should have heard and believed when Jesus said that I can satisfy the, the thirst of all who believe. He will never thirst again. And he said, uh, I am the light of the world. They just didn't want to believe. And in John 8, he said, and even before... Abraham was born, I am. So he came from God. They didn't want to believe. They had Jesus' words, but they also, and we have his words oftentimes, but we harden our hearts. They had Jesus' words, but he also showed them in his works that he did, what he did was in the Father's name. The Jewish leaders had seen and heard about many healings, and we have too including the lame man by the pool of Bethesda, Bethesda and the man born blind. He miraculously turned the water into wine and he fed 5,000. How many demonstrations of his messiahship did they need to have? How many messages do we need to hear? How many instructions do we need to receive? But they are not willing to admit their blindness. Again, they have their own agenda. And the religious leaders did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And so when they ask him that question, they're simply baiting him, you know, to come up with something, just, just to ridicule him. You know Jesus taught in parables using figurative language. We know Jesus always used parables. He used uh, uh, metaphors from the time, of the agricultural time in which they lived. So his answer, in his answer, he says, um, when they say, don't keep us in suspense, Jesus goes into sheep talk. He answers by using the image of a sheep, the relationship between the true shepherd and his sheep. He explained that those are, who are his are like sheep. They, they only respond to the voice of their own shepherd. There could be a, a theological discussion about whether people respond to become sheep or will become sheep because we are already predestined. You know, it says we're pre-chosen. But that's not a conversation we're not going to have today. The main point for today is discerning the shepherd's voice above all other voices. We must shut out all the noise that is all the distractions. Even those things that keep us from showing up in church on Sunday. We have to shut out all the lies of the enemy and listen to the still, small voice of God. Yes. Listen for his voice and follow where he leads. Yes. His voice needs to be the clearest voice we hear and respond to when competing voices try to pull us in all different directions and hold us in all different directions. If you don't, you might get confused thinking that right, wrong is right. Running left and right. Remember Jesus, don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. The only way to know which way to go or to walk is by intentionally listening for the sound of his voice and following it. The word has it all. Don't be like the Pharisees and reject the voice of the Lord because his way is not our way. Because he calls because he, his way calls us to action. 
Jesus calls his first disciples to follow, to follow him in his ways. Not everyone is going to be called into formal ministry. No, that's not the point. But wherever you are planted, you are called to a action. As a pastor family, family ministry regarding our relationships, broken relationships, we are called to build a bridge and get over it. Is that in the Bible? Yes, he said, if you have a fault with a brother, fix it before you come to the communion table. Before. The Bible says don't neglect, neglect the caring of your aging parents. He said, look after widows and orphans. Husbands, love your wives sacrificially. Don't commit adultery. Is that in the Bible? Of course it is. Don't discard the wife of your youth for another youth. You're both older. Parents don't exasperate your children. Children, obey your parents. Show me some fruit. Is that in the Bible? Show me some fruit. Galatians 2, 5 and 22. Show me some kindness. Can you be gentle? Can you exercise some self-control? Mind your mouth. Is that in the Bible? Well, yeah, that's the paraphrase, paraphrase of James. Love mercy. Seek justice. Walk humbly. That's what Jesus did. Walk worthy. For believers to follow his voice is to follow his teachings. Those what I just gave to you are his teachings. That's what he's called us to do. That's how he called us to be. That's how we can be united when we're all walking in the spirit. When we follow his teachings. For believers to follow his voice is to follow his teachings. To love God and to love others. His commands are not to enslave us with rules and regulations, do's and don'ts, but to liberate us, to free us, to break every chain. And to what? And to transform us into loving, relational people that God intended us to be. Loving, relational people. A little more sheep talk. <laughs> In the towns of this time, uh, sheep from different flocks may be all put in one sheepfold. They were all kept together and they were overseen by one doorkeeper who would keep an eye on the shepherds, what shepherds brought sheep in and when they took them out. But it was pretty much impossible, do you know, to steal sheep? Do you know why? Shepherds and the sheep have a very deep personal connection. Each shepherd had a different voice. Each shepherd, Jesus has a different voice than all the other voices that we hear. And his sheep know his voice. Yes. In this passage, the sheep would know the shepherd's voice. They even know the tap, tap of their shepherd's um, staff. They would not be distracted or pulled away by another shepherd who came and called, and whatever call they had, the sheep would follow. So there may be a hundred sheep in the pen, and you own ten. When you put out your call, only your ten are going to come out. The other, the other ninety are going to ignore what you're calling. They knew from experience that this was a sound they could trust. Their shepherd would lead them to pasture, beside still waters, pasture where they would have something to eat. They knew they had a good shepherd and they followed his voice. Again, all the other sheep would just ignore the sound because it meant nothing to them. It didn't mean protection, it didn't mean food, it didn't mean guidance, it meant nothing. Oh, we could only tune out the voices that don't do us any good and hear his voice. Ooh, the danger we could avoid if we listen only for our shepherd's voice. And the good shepherd calls us by name. Of course, if he knows, if the good heavenly father knows the number of stars in the heavens, the number of hairs on our head, he knows each one of us by name. We need to get to know his voice. So again, when it comes to the question of identity, it is um, the same question to us. The religious leaders wanted Jesus to prove who he was, and he says, but his identity was not the issue. He proved who he was. He was the son of the, the son of God from all that he had taught and all that he had spoken. And their identity and our identity as faithful followers is our their identity and our identity as faithful followers is the question. 
So if we are not listening to his voice, can we call ourselves one of his sheep? And all those things that we mentioned this morning, if we're not following in those teachings, are we, can we call ourselves one of his sheep? My sheep know my voice, I know my sheep, and they follow me. Yes, Jesus calls us sheep, that's what we are, and he is the only true shepherd, so his voice is the only one that we can trust. So I give you one, re that was one reason, uh, sheep, um, did I say, uh, we don't want to be sheep, and another reason um, why we may not be able to hear his voice is we may think that oftentimes people think that they're not worthy. That is true. I've heard people say, I messed up. I don't know, but it's too, it's too, I'm too far gone. But we are never too far gone for God. Amen. He can reach you wherever you are. Amen. In Luke 8, 19, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he is the Messiah. He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has anointed me to announce pardon, reconciliation, forgiveness, breaking up every chain. You are never too messed up. You are never too far gone. No one is worthy, by the way. No one is worthy. We are not right, made righteous. We are only made righteous by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Now, you may not want to think of yourself as a sheep, but that's again what Jesus calls those who are his. You know, sheep will fall on the ground sometimes, and you know that if a sheep fell got over on its back, it cannot get up by itself. It actually has to depend on the shepherd to come and help it up. So sometimes when we fall down, we need to call on our Savior. We can't, you can't always pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Sometimes people think that you can, but we cannot. But we have a Savior, a good shepherd, who will help us up again. His sheep are all those who have trusted in him as Savior, and they are the ones for whom he laid down his life. Scripture teaches that sheep are identified by three characteristics. Again, we heard it already. They know their shepherd. They know his voice. They hear his voice. And they follow his voice. And if you have strayed from the fold, as sheep are prone to do, the shepherd goes to find them. You know that. He leaves the 99 and he searches for the one. He is concerned for each and every one in this place. Our shepherd, Jesus, knew us before the foundation of the world. And the song says, he bought me, he sought me. He came looking for us. Isn't it a wonder? Jesus is the hound of heaven. He comes looking for each and every one of us. Wherever you are in your journey, wherever you are in your life, whatever you may be going through, know that Jesus, the hound of heaven, seeks you. And then when he finds you, he bought us and he paid for us with his redeeming blood. Why would you not respond to his voice when he calls us to come to him, surrender to him, the light of the world, the one who gives life? Sometimes, though, we as, as humans, again, though we uh, are rebellious sheep, we begin to ignore his direction and we choose to listen to the competing voices that promise to give us what we want and as we go our own way, and this is the difficult part for one who loves her family and her people and everyone who doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ, it becomes harder to, for them to hear Christ's voice. This is not me speaking. This is me giving you the heart of the Lord Jesus for you. He wants you to bring you into his flock. But when it becomes harder to hear his voice, The way back is really just to surrender your personal preferences and your wants and say, Lord, help me. Yeah. Just ask the Lord to help you. Yeah. And we will hear, the, the clearly, hear more clearly the shepherd's voice calling us back to himself and to do what is best for us. I just want to re re reference Jonah. Uh, you know how Jonah was disobedient, he didn't do what the Lord asked him to do. And whenever we, do, we don't respond, respond to God's call, we never know where we might end up. I don't know. But I know I wouldn't want to end up in the whale of a fish, in the belly of a fish. 
that's figuratively speaking, it was pretty messy in there. So it means I would want to end up in a messy place. C.S. Lewis says that sometimes things happen in our lives that force us to listen. We don't want that to happen, right? God whispers to us when we're in our pleasures, he says. He whispers to us. Sometimes we don't hear the whisper, do we? And then he says, he speaks to us in our conscience, but he shouts in our pains. Does God have to put you in a situation of desperate pain to rouse us? He says, it is a megaphone to rouse us in our deafness. So don't, but don't think you are no longer worthy. Recall again one other person before I come, get towards the end. If we recall, if you think you're unworthy, recall Adam and Eve and who hid in the shame in the garden. They acted disobeying God. They hid, trying to distance themselves from God. When we mess up, this is not the way to go. But hear his voice today speaking to your heart. I love you. I care for you. And he's calling your name. He wants to lead you beside still waters, to anoint your head with oil, to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies, to bring you to safety, to a fullness of life. He wants you to listen and respond to his voice. He is, his voice is not one of condemnation. He said, I have redeemed you. You are mine. You have been redeemed with my precious blood. That's what he says to us. His voice says he is faithful to forgive our mistakes and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. His voice says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, who are bearing burdens and anxieties and whatever sorrows. Other people may contradict what God is telling you, people who don't know the Lord as well. Others may have an opinion, but you can trust the one who laid down his life for you. You can trust his calling. You can trust his nudging to come to him. You can trust him that he will lead you. In the context of the last couple of verses, Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Jesus has a grip on you. Even when you are weak and you let go, he has a firm grip and he will not let you go. Isn't that encouraging? You're never going to go so far that Jesus loses his grip. So you can't go under because he's got a grip on you. He's our protector and our shepherd who guards and guides, who feeds and protects and defends anyone who tries to snatch you out of his hand. And like I said, you let go and your arms are failing, but he's got you. He's got you. A shepherd would guard his sheep with his life. The sheep pen was a large enclosure made of, it was had just rocks piled up about three, three feet high. And it had an opening for the sheep to just to get through. And the, like I said earlier, the large pens had a watchman so that if you had ten sheep, you come in, you call, and you take yours. But the smaller sheep, the smaller sheep pens, where you only had your own sheep in there, the shepherd himself would lie down at the opening and be the gate to fight off the wolves and any predators trying to attack the sheep. And in, in earlier in this passage, Jesus said, I am the gate. I am the gate. So any attack upon you, you've got to go through Jesus. He is the gate. And you already know he laid down his life for you. choose Jesus. But we know that he is one voice that we can trust. We know he heals. We know he delivers. We know he sustains. We know he protects. We know that he is the only one. You may love your husband. You may love your wife. But Jesus already demonstrated he would die for you. 
And we are absolutely assured of the gift of being in his grip forever in his care and his keeping if we follow his voice. Now that you are reminded of how much the Good Shepherd loves you and cares for you, if you've heard his voice, what will your response be today, tomorrow? Will you follow his leading? Will you answer his call today? Will you follow his teaching? Will you always obey his voice? In Jesus' name, I give you thanks today, God, for this word. I pray, God, that someone who may have heard your voice today would hearken unto your word and respond to your voice. Not my voice, Lord, but your voice calling into an eternal life, abundant life today. We give you praise and thanks, God, for the wonderful gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for loving us so much, God, that you would call us and then die for us. I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. If you were here this morning and you've heard the word of God over and over, or maybe you've heard it for the first time, and you don't know what this wonderful gift is, like I said, you in Jesus, you have a Savior who would do anything for you. Who else would do that? And you may have some things going on that you need help with that you say, you don't need to clean up anything. Jesus says, come, and he'll do the rest. Is there one this morning who would want to give their lives over to Christ? I had a beautiful call, and I said, um, when, when Jesus calls, will we obey? Um, I had a couple of calls from two of my siblings, my blood siblings this week, and they encouraged me so much because I said, you know, when Jesus calls, will you answer, will you obey what he calls you to do? And you all know that I had a career in another way, another capacity, but when Jesus called me to this ministry, I said, Lord, what, you know, I'm okay here. And he had something planned for me to do. And in this hour, he said, and I said, well, you know, I'm still at New Horizons. I was talking to the Lord late last night. And he said, yes, I know, <laughs> my child. And um, he said, uh, I said, but I have all this family. He said, yeah, I know. You have a congregation in itself, a little small church, minister to them. And so I had been calling my family all week, and I said, okay, God, I'm doing that. And he said, okay. And so then uh, I said, I don't know. Am I doing all right, Lord? Am I doing what you call me to do? He said, yes, just be patient. And my one brother said to me this week, I thank God for you. And he said, I always love you as a sister. But he said, I thank God for the ministry. He said, you've been ministering to me these last year, and I thank you so much for that. And then another brother called me last night. He's here today. And I, I can't say this in public if they didn't say this because they said, oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> and my brother called me last night, and he said, you know, you know I love you as my sister. He always tells me that, and I thank God for him. He said, but you know, he said, you minister to me. He said, I'm talking to you in your ministry capacity. So I said, yeah, thank you, my brother, Archie. <laughs> and I said, thank you. I said, I will always do what the Lord leads me to do. I will call you when he tells me to call you. So if I said, if I don't call you for a while, then I call you because the Holy Spirit said, call Archie today. And so uh, I, have, I thank God that he's given me a little church. That's what I call it. He's given me a little church in my family. You have that many siblings and extended family that is the size of some small congregations. You know, I know, now I know the Lord called me to this for whatever reason. I mean, wherever he lands me. So again, if you've heard the voice of God this morning, my brothers, my sister, whomever, you want to rededicate, you want to come to the Lord, this is your time. You can come on up to the front in case there's someone who wants to come and be praying for it. Just we want to rejoice today. Is there one?